Mixing is all about solving problems. One of my favorite books and movies is The Martian. There's a line at the end that says, if you solve enough problems, you get to come home. So if that works for an astronaut stranded on a planet 15 light minutes away, it can probably work for us in our mixes too. So especially when it comes to mixing vocals, a lot of folks have trouble getting the EQ right getting it to feel balanced, getting it to work for the song. So today we're going to go through five EQ moves, kind of a five point checklist of how to make sure your vocal is sitting right every time. By the way, if you don't already have my five step mix guide, that gives you a step by step process to follow every time you mix. What we're going to talk about today in this video works best inside of that framework. So you can have a free copy at five step mix.com. Okay, let's dive in. Here is a raw, unmixed vocal. Let's hit play so we all kind of know what it sounds like. Breaking down on the breakaway, always the last to go. The takeaway is it's over, over, and I'm the last to know. So I'm going to use a really helpful tool. If you have one of these, this is a multiband compressor. In Studio One, it's called multiband dynamics. But I'm actually not using it for any compression. I'm just using it to help me isolate different ranges of frequencies. If we zoom in here, you can see that there are five bands or groups of frequencies, and each of these has its own solo button. So we can quickly listen to what each band sounds like on a vocal or really any other instrument. So listening to that vocal, what do you hear? How do you know which frequencies are problematic? We're going to go through these five ranges and talk about what what the problems could be there and how to listen for them. So the first is this low frequency range. This one isn't terribly important. If we solo this and listen, we're not going to hear much of anything. So even with the volume cranked up 18 decibels, there's not there's just not much material there. There's a little bit when I go Ooh, at the end of the phrase that comes through. Um, but because I recorded this through an external preamp with a high pass filter engaged already, there's just not much here. Typically speaking, there's almost no good that happens way down here in the lows on a vocal. It is the location of any boominess that might be there. So by default, I'm typically using a high pass filter and rolling off at least around 80 hertz and below on just about every vocal I ever mix. The only exception would be if it's like a beatbox track, right, where I'm going, and I'm trying to get that big boom out of the bottom end, then of course, I EQ it more like a kick drum. Uh, but any other like singing or spoken word vocal, for the most part, it's getting a high pass filter, probably as high as 80 hertz, to just make sure there's no rumble there. This wasn't the least, this is probably the least of your worries. Don't, don't worry too much about this. High pass filter, good to go. Now, the next band though, is the low mid band. So here's, I'm gonna hit play, let you hear the whole vocal, then I'll solo the low mids. This is between uh, between 80 and 250 hertz, so you can hear what that sounds like. Breaking down on the breakaway. I call this the headache frequency. Um, another word for this frequency range could be muddy. So a lot of the warmth can come out of this range, but a lot of times if you're having a problem, and by the way, the way that I mix and the way I think you should mix is subtractive. Find the problems and remove them versus finding the good stuff and enhancing it. I think you'll find you'll get much better results that way and you won't cause as many problems. So to me, this range, 80 to 250-ish, is where the warmth happens, but it's also where a lot of the muddiness happens. This frequency range, more than any other, gives me a headache if it's too loud in the mix. So whether it's vocals or anything else, if you're getting kind of a wont, 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 wont sort of a fum, 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 low kind of fake low end sort of sound, like a really, like a crappy subwoofer kind of a sound, it's probably in this frequency right here. And it doesn't even carry much of the tone or the character of the vocal. It's mostly just kind of almost like a percussive sound. Woo, 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 woo. That's there. So if you have a mix, you're listening to the entire mix, and you hear, keep hearing this kind of 
woofiness to the vocal, you probably have something built up too much here in this 80 to 250 range. Maybe around 120, 150 or so. You can cut that down a little bit, and then the vocal won't have so much of that won't won't thing happening. There'll still be some warmth there, but it won't be as prominent, won't give you a headache, and will make the vocal sit better in the mix. All right, the next range is what we'll call just the mid-range. This is between 250 and 1K. So I'm when I'm thinking about this, I'm really thinking more like five to 800 is kind of the core location for that. For me, on a vocal, this mid-range sounds like if you took your hands and cupped them around your mouth, that's the sound here. This right here, where you've cut out all the highs, my hands are blocking the high frequencies, and the low frequencies aren't really getting through either. So the only thing that hits the microphone now are the mid-range frequencies. Let's hear what that sounds like. Breaking down on the breakaway. Breaking down on the breakaway. So it's it's low fi like the telephone effect, but it's also kind of that wah, 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 right in there, really emphasized. So this this is the, probably the spot in a vocal that I will touch the least. Like if you go and look at my last 20 vocal mixes, I probably didn't do a lot in this range because typically it's fine. But occasionally if I'm feeling like that vocal just sounds, it kind of sounds like the predominant frequency I'm hearing on top of the mix is these frequencies, then I will go in and pull down the mid-range. So there's kind of a hollowness that can be there. If it sounds like your hands are over your mouth, go find the mid-range and pull them down a little bit. Next is the upper mids. This is where I probably spend most of my time on vocals. Between 1 and 5K, that's the source of a lot of nasally sounds, uh, also a little bit of sibilance, uh, but mainly it's the E sound. So in English, we say E a lot. And we also, a lot of people tend to sing pretty nasally sounding, so that combination means that this frequency range can jump out quite a bit. It's a harsher frequency range. It can be super annoying, but let's take a listen. Breaking down on the breakaway. Breaking down on the breakaway. So it just has that ringy problem. So... Now we know in this range, and it's usually for me around 2 to 3K is where the really the annoying parts. It can change. Every vocalist will be different, right? Because everybody's resonant frequencies in their skull are different. But somewhere in this 1 to 5K range, if you have a vocal that's going every time they sing the word me or that breaking, I'm singing it loudly and high. So breaking down has that sort of a frequency that comes through. Breaking down. If that's coming through too much, that E vowel sound, then go in and find that frequency and pull it down a little bit. You can do that with either just a regular notch EQ or even dynamic EQ if you want to get fancy, but that will make the vocal sound smoother. Without that, the vocal sounds harsh, or at least it just sounds too loud in certain on certain words and certain syllables and can be really annoying. Thankfully, when you go pull out a narrow like group of frequencies on a vocal, it typically doesn't affect the rest of the vocal very much at all. So you can be pretty aggressive with it. It'll take care of the eh that's there, and then you're left with just a nice, smooth vocal. And then finally, the high frequencies. The, the high frequencies are obviously where a lot of the air is, the breathiness of a vocal, the, the bright top end. So here's what that sounds like. Breaking down on the breakaway. It's also where the sibilance lives. So the S's and the T's, 5K and up, 6, 7K and up, that's where that is. The main problem people make here is, the, the, the mistake they make, is they just, they like the sound of boosting those highs and they just boost the crap out of them. And it's typically, it sounds pretty unnatural and it's hard on the ears. Um, but if you want a little bit of air, a little boost up here can work wonders after you've done some cuts elsewhere. A lot of times when you cut, let's say, the high mids and the low mids to kind of smooth that out, the high frequencies tend to just take care of themselves, especially after you add things like compression, which will bring them out a little bit more. But if you have something that's just not, doesn't have a lot of breath to it, but you wish it would, this would be where I would look. Also, if you have something that's just incredibly harsh for some reason, maybe the way they say their S's and SH's just the way their teeth are, right? Um, it just comes out shh, really loud, then maybe this is a spot where we come and do some EQ. So that's your checklist. When you hear a vocal and you say it's not right yet, figure out where the most prominent problem is. Which of these boxes does it fall into? And then go fix that. And then zoom back out, listen again, and fix any other problems that come up. The key here is we don't want to get rid of any of these frequency ranges, maybe the lows on a vocal, but the other four, we're not trying to get rid of them entirely, it's just they're out of balance. 
one of them's being selfish, we need to pull it back down and say, hey, you need to be roughly the same as everybody else. That's the goal here. Frequency, tonal balance that works for the mix. By the way, after you do this a couple of times, you'll start to realize, okay, I'm having these same consistent problems in my vocal mixes. Are there changes I can make in the recording process to make these problems less of a problem in the mixing process? So it will affect how you set up your microphones, how you perform as a singer, how you record, what mics you choose, and that will trickle down into making the mix process be a lot easier, a lot better, and ultimately give you better sounding music overall. All right, that's it. Go try it on a mix. If you don't have a mixing process, don't jump into this vocal EQ thing too early. Go download my five-step mix guide at fivestepmix.com. It'll take you through steps one, two, th and three really need to happen before a lot of this happens. You'll do a lot of this vocal EQ during steps three and four, but not during steps one and two, and those are important. So go check that out, apply that to your mixes, and listen to how great they sound. Thanks for watching. See ya.